All right, let's see what's inside this. Looks like a good enough battery. Does it say Duracell on the front? There you go. Holy crap, this thing is heavy. Ryan's Mobile One. We got a Duracell power source. This is the 660. I was looking at getting a Jackery and then I went to the new Costco in their area and they had this sitting there and I'm like, well, that's kind of what I need. So anyway, we're gonna get into this, drag this off the cliff and see what we can do to, oh my gosh. All right, there you go. Holy crap, this thing is heavy. What is this way? Let's find out. So looking at the scale, we are 57 pounds. If we switch gears, then we are 26 kilograms. It's heavy. That's a, that's a small child is what that is. A really heavy baby. The bezel's great because it protects it from getting banged on. These knobs here so that you can add more batteries to create more capacity so it lasts longer if the power goes out. But man, does that cut down on portability. This thing also takes a really long time to charge, whether it's solar or plugged into the wall. So when you add more batteries and wear them down, it takes forever to get it back up. This is old technology here. Uh, the rubber feet on this are really grippy. If you were to put this flat against something, it would be nice if you had like a tunnel a hole through here so that you could run your daisy chain connectors or this thing because space is a premium in a lot of applications where this would be used there's no room for the plug because this sticks out so far why does it stick out so far uh because this is in there so far yeah and that just seems like a point of failure yeah i'm a little frustrated with that i did not get this for free i paid money for this <laughs> it'd be nice if they included a plug so you could wire whatever solar panel you wanted to this uh, but because they don't you're kind of limited unless you have the ability to solder you can see i've got a soldering station back here and so i'll probably order something like that online you'd go to radio shack but where's radio shack anymore right this isn't something that you can just grab and go with you do have to charge this for 24 hours before use otherwise you can do permanent damage to the battery for the life of the product keep it plugged in or recharge every three months to prevent permanent battery damage it's got solar man heavy it's not good for van life what's it for i'm guessing the backup power supply for computers or whatever i mean who's going to have this plugged in all the time i don't know uh looking at the chart on this if you wanted to use this for your computer for a desktop it can power a desktop computer for three hours that gives you plenty of time to save your work so that if the power goes out when you're editing a video or doing taxes or whatever else uh, you'll be backed up to where you won't lose your stuff I'm gonna go ahead and let this get charged up. I will say one of the nice things about this being so heavy is that it's stable and it would be hard to run away with this. <laughs> Can you imagine running down the street with one of these? I mean, it's kind of a boat anchor. So I've got it plugged in. We gotta do it 24 hours, so two o'clock on Friday. We'll be able to unplug this and use it. So it shows input, it doesn't show how much input's coming in. I'm really excited to hook it up to solar panel and see if it tells you what kind of results you're getting from your solar panel. I would imagine it does, but we'll find out. I bought this back in January. I couldn't do the solar test with it, but Miniman Prep has. You ought to check out his video. I'll link the link in the description. He went into pretty good detail about it. Fix My Bleep also did a video on it, and he had similar results. And they said it can do it, but it's not great. I bought this 100-watt solar panel shortly thereafter. I was going to put it on the roof of the Forerunner project. Videos on that coming soon. Uh, you can go more than 100 watts, but it won't do you any good. It won't let those pixies in. And in fact, it only goes 87 to 90. It's not that it's broken not getting those watts. It's just because it has a power width modulation thing instead of a maximum power point tracking controller. The best setup is to have a lithium iron phosphate battery and an MPPT controller. And it's got the opposite. It's got the lead mat and it's got the uh, PWM charge controller. What do you do while you're waiting for this to charge? Well, if you're me, you open it up and take a look at the guts. Duracell 660. What do they call it? They call it the power source. It's a power source. This was such an impulse buy. Already got buyer's remorse. Normally I spend the big money and have something for a long time. Wow, it's a big fuse. There's your battery. You guys aren't gonna believe this. This is pretty simple stuff. All right, let's see what's inside this, buddy. Look at that big old maxi fuse. If you blow this, then you can't link it to other batteries. So I guess this is uh, if you hook it up backwards, you don't screw it up. And it's just got a big AGM battery. And it's got handles on it. You see the handles that flip up? You can get that top bar off and we'll see what the specs are on the battery. So this is your power inverter for all the power outlets on the front. The power outlets on the front are on a common green board. Your USBs are underneath down here. Got a ribbon cable for the display. That's why this is so low. 
it holds it down but they have to have the height for this because the power inverter has to be there this also causes it to have a low center of gravity so that it doesn't want to fall over it wants to sit the way it is and then utilizing that space you see how it's got a step here just to make absolutely sure you've got room for this but utilizing this space for storage and then giving you a flat top surface so that you can have things sit flat on it or slide anyway it's kind of a cool design i really think that whoever designed it was designing it to sit on a table or sit around a computer it was not designed to ride in a car or a trailer pretty simple stuff somebody put heat shrink on the hold down the hold down basically a channel and you've got your reservoir type thing that the cord goes in in the top i'll show you that that sits on top and pinches the cables on top of that thing so if you mounted that thing in a truck or a car and it's bumping down the road uh, that hold down could become a shunt that would short the battery terminals together and burn your stuff down but in reality this thing's only made to last three years not ten anyway so a lot of the weight of this is just the battery the case itself isn't that heavy duty in order to get the battery out you need a three millimeter allen wrench pull those six out and then a 14 millimeter and then a 10 millimeter for your terminals and you're in or you're up one of the two depends if you're feeling european or pissy looking on the inside there's just so much more room looks like a good enough battery does it say duracell on the front what brand battery are we doing we are doing a leoc never heard of leoc looking into them they're a big company out of hong kong my bad so it's lead non-spillable battery leoc battery company made in china maintenance free sealed lead acid battery this is a lp12-55 12 volt 55 amp hours that's a revelation how big is it look out engine parts we're measuring batteries up in here what's the width well that's a niner thick five and three eighths and the height of it all including the terminal is eight and a quarter but for clearance you still have to allow the bolt and the cable on top so we're at nine eight and a quarter to the top of the terminal and i'll just say five and a half but it's really five and three eighths tell you what these things are made in a hurry you know screws weren't all the way in you know bounce down some dirt roads with this i want that tight so if you're looking at it and it's sitting in the machine front being this like this the positive needs to be close to you and not reversed if you're going to replace it with something else um let's look at the specs it says standby use 13.5 to 13.8 volts cycle use 14.5 to 15 and in imperial units 35 pounds and 11 ounces so more than half the weight of the whole thing is this battery so if you were to replace this with a lithium one you might really be onto something you might really improve on all kinds of aspects of how long it lasts and how light it is as far as water resistance nope <laughs> not at all maybe do like some thin silicone around this so that if it does sit out in the rain at least it won't get in there too far um, also as far as this latch i'm totally going to do that there's a big vulnerability here if this got full of water run some sealant on the inside of here there's a lot you could do to improve this that's what i'm saying this is just a Phillips. There's four screws, very accessible, very easy to service. You could totally put in a different battery. Man, the options here. So as far as the solar controller kind of stuff, it's all this box down here. So when you buy this, you're getting uh, an AGL battery. You're getting a solar controller. You're getting this big maxi fuse. You're getting a in power inverter and the rest of the charge controller and stuff that's up here in the display. A lot of empty space in here. So as far as a wiggle, room in the battery i'm going to push it all the way forward looking down in there it looks like you got about a quarter of an inch you got a little bit of wiggle room on the nine inches this way one thing that i thought was kind of weird when i was messing around and trying to move this these are designed to be able to fall out when it's in the i'm holding it in bearing weight position just kind of screwy design flaw in my opinion on the battery do i love this battery no it's inherently not great but the terminals were really strong i went to take it out and they were tight they were in good shape as far as that goes and i was worried because sometimes you can break these because if they're over torqued and you go to loosen it it can cause it to snap but they were pretty heavy duty this is your strip cap that holds all of the acid in being sealed 
I would not recommend running this on the side. Plates inside of this, because this is lead plates and acid, they have to be covered with acid, so it should be kept in the upright position as long as you're running this battery. Overall, it's a great value. I bought it at Costco, $499. If you look on other places, it's as much as $600, uh, $550 on Amazon, I believe. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to go that route. You don't have a Costco membership. You don't want to get out of the house. Don't blame you. You can go that route. I love the idea of being able to put another battery in it. This is so easy to change. If you were to ever screw this up and not keep it charged, let it sit with the battery drained and ruin it, it would not be hard to find another battery to fit there. As an auto mechanic of more than 30 years experience, the best way to see if you've got some parasitic draw is when you go to hook up the battery if it arcs or sparks. Same thing when you go to hook up jumper cables, see if stuff's draining on it. I went to hook this up and you can see where the burn mark is right here. You should be hand tightening these. I'm not super invested in this. So this guy, watch. You see how much that sparks? That initial, that could be some capacitive stuff feeding back to the battery too. Whatever it is, if you take the battery out and go put it back in, it's going to have a little bit of a shocky factor to it. It's only 12 volts. Volts are pressure. If you're thinking in terms of a garden hose, 12 volts is not very much pressure. I've been electrocuted, shocked by 9 volt batteries to the tongue. Wall outlets 120 here in North America. I've been zapped by that doing Christmas lights and it's tingly. It's like a washing machine in India is electrocuted on. All I did is touch the dial and some stuff was messed up on it. That gets to you. <laughs> That's a little more pressure. But 12 volts, uh, the impedance, the resistance in your skin, 100,000 ohms, which is resistance to flow. That's the kink in the hose. Uh, but this is very low pressure. It's not much pressure at all. I went out and did some testing. I got the solar panel hooked up and here's how that went. So this is the solar panel I was going to put on the Forerunner project before I sold it. It's about a year old and it's putting out about 67 to 71 watts. So this panel used to do 110 watts and it's 10 years old and they lose efficiency a little bit every it's putting out about 37 watts in the same daylight so here we have the duracell in its unnatural habitat this is made for being in an office somewhere not outdoors and my understanding is they say don't have it charging and run power at the same time it's not made for that uh, you can see that it's got the solar panel thing on there uh, the little light says charging and i've got it plugged in and this is also charging this is the one for the little chainsaw. And uh, we're gonna try 12 volts. You get this turned on. It's all good. This thing was at 100% charge when I got all this stuff put in. And it says the output is 96 watts. I don't know what the state of charge is though. It says that it is bars, whatever that means. Let's see if it goes down charging these two. And let's put a phone charger on it too. I just took some solderless connectors, crimp connectors if you will, and adapted it, pulled this off so I could be able to get it together. Real ghetto. And then this cable, I cut the other end of the Anderson connector off so that I could do that to it to just make it work just to get by. And I've got the Dewalt charging. I've got my fans blowing. A little piece of grass or something, you see that it's just blowing. And then I've got my contact fast charger why do I have all this stuff at the same time? I was told that you can't have the solar on at the same time that you're running it. I thought it was shut down and say no. But as you can see, it's got the solar on the display showing and it says 95 watts and it's showing 100%. We're gonna let this run for a little bit. But these, this outlet bank, obviously it's working. The USB is also working and the 12 volt cigarette lighter power lighter, whatever also working. I've got this cranked up to full blast. I didn't think this was possible. I was told it wouldn't do this. So it is 252. Let's let it run for a little bit and see if it loses a bar on the charge. I know from another unit that says what the watt input is that this puts out about 70 watts. That's when it's facing directly into the sun. Should probably get this directly into the sun for a fair test. That is right at the sun so that should be 70 watts as we measured. Oh it's already down. It's draining it hard. It's already lost a bar and a half at 93 watts. So we should be losing about 20 watts. I think it's losing more than that. It's flashing charging instead of solid charging. So let's take off some of that load. Turn off these fans. 
So maybe it says that it's recognizing that it's on, but it's not charging. Now it's just flashing the one bar. We're still doing this and still charging the battery pack. So you can do it, but I don't think that it's holding because it seemed to be draining it really fast. So it's 257 and it seems like it's still charging, but I'm not sure it was at full bars before. And with those two things running, but not the fans, just the battery charger and the phone charger, it seems like it's making headway again. All right, it's been a little over 20 minutes. This battery back charged. So it's all done. This is all done. It's all charged up. And we're back to 100%. That's actually decent. You can, in fact, run this at the same time you're doing this. I don't know if it's bad for the AGM battery, but it can be done. Come to find out, it's not fully charged. It shut off. It quit doing it might be from this sitting in the sun i think if it gets too hot it shuts down and it is hot it's a good idea to have your battery in the shade while you have your solar panel in the sun this however seems to have a better charge controller it's got a fan in it and the pack shows fully charged in summary this is not a good choice for camping look what i did i put it in the foam thing so that it can not have such jarring effects and i've got a little thing for the solar and isn't that cute so i'm going to use this for my computer at the house i really wish i had this when i lived in india we were always having power failures and brownouts and all kinds of stuff like that it's hard on your electronics they say not to use a surge protector on this don't plug a surge protector in it i don't know why but they're saying don't do that they're saying don't don't have it hooked up to the solar panel doing solar while you're using it that's not effective but i came to find out that it doesn't charge well but you can do it and it'll still give you power out of all the power outlets uh, but the long and the short of it is this is too heavy i bought this because it's on the box it checked all the boxes for me said it's ideal for solar ready ideal for camp i'm like yeah that's what i want to use it for and then i figured i could use a backup power supply in the meantime it's so heavy it's not portable and the pulse width modulation solar controller i mean pulse i mean you think of it it's like only on half the time kind of thing a uh, flashlight works a lot longer a lot of them the led ones they have like a pulse thing and then it doubles your battery life well, that's a cool feature but you don't want that between your solar panel and your battery you want it to be able to be a good solid feed and that's what the uh, max powerpoint tracking does in a lot of the other units that cost about the same as this does that are in the same price bracket so by the time i paid 500 for this and 160 for my solar panel i could have got any number of setups that would have been a lot better for doing portable that's what you need to know about the duracell power source 660. thanks for watching be sure to click like and subscribe